These lights from Fireflies looked really awesome. However, after spending some time with them, I'm sadly disappointed with many of the design choices made here. Are they good lights? Yeah, they are. And I think they're a solid value, but certain design flaws limit their usefulness for me. Both the PO1 and PO2 have essentially the same design and features, one being a small 14500 based light with the Nietzsche 519A, and the other utilizing an 18650 and a much more intense Osram emitter, with an emphasis on being a pocketable thrower. Both feature a main TIR optic with single color auxiliaries, the same interface, a magnet in the tail cap, and included cells with built-in USB-C charging ports. Both lights are well built of aluminum with prominent large backlit metal buttons that are a bit mushy and indistinct. The buttons are the same on both lights, and as such seem very oversized on the PO1, which somewhat undermines its otherwise excellent portability. The lights are machined and anodized pretty well, but have the usual sharp edges at the tail cap and around the button. The larger PO2 features a very nice stainless steel bezel and a glass lens, which is lacking on the smaller light. Both are equipped with acrylic TIR lenses, which result in great beams for both of these lights. The PO1 in particular is super nice, with a domed, warm white Nietzsche 519A that provides a really excellent floody beam with smooth spill falloff. Though there are noticeable artifacts, however there is no visible color shifting. The PO2 is intended more as a thrower, and its large optic and tiny Osram LED result in a tight, throwy hotspot that manages to punch very far while still having a decent wide, soft spill. There are a couple rings in the spill, and the color is of course a cool white 6000K, but as a thrower in a compact form factor, this is really impressive. Though bright, these lights don't offer super impressive drivers with great regulation. On turbo, the larger PO2 quickly drops from almost 1000 lumens to about 750, which holds for a pretty impressive 10 minutes. From there, it drops straight down to 330 lumens. The smaller PO1 falls from a slightly under-spec 830 lumens to about 700 over the course of 6 minutes, which again is pretty good, and then drops straight down to 300 lumens, which more or less holds her most of the run. After the initial large drops, both lights gradually slope downward as the battery voltage falls, displaying poor regulation, but maintaining decent output overall. My main gripe with both of these lights is the user interface, which is a novel firmware from Firefly Light. It's just not very good. These lights have two mode groups, each with two memorized output levels. Pressing from off activates the standard mode group, and holding from off activates the lower mode group. In either group, pressing and holding cycles just once between the two levels. Another press and hold is required to cycle back. Double pressing activates turbo. Compared to more standard systems that cycle indefinitely while held, this UI just takes additional actions and brain power to cycle from the higher to the lower modes, which also requires turning the light back off in order to do so. It also does not allow for reliably activating moonlight level from off, just whatever level was memorized in the low mode group. The UI also has a four click lockout that deactivates the auxiliaries and renders it unresponsive. Three presses from off enters the bizarre self-defense mode, which is just a press for strobe instead of constant on. Perhaps that's useful to someone, but it's not appropriate for stressful situations because it requires three presses and then an additional conscientious activation, and it's useless for illumination at that point until self-defense mode is turned back off. So I just don't see the purpose of this here. Finally, there is no way to dim or deactivate the aux LEDs. I feel these lights would have been far more compelling with Anduril, or even just something more traditional, but I understand that doesn't appeal to everyone. Nonetheless, this system here just isn't very good, and I don't think it offers anything useful over a more standard UI. It's still usable as a flashlight, but for me, this is a deal breaker rather than a selling point. Another issue is the auxiliary drain. These monochrome LEDs are only able to run at a single output level that is quite bright at half a lumen, which is enough to be disturbing once your eyes have been dark adapted. Worse, these aux lights have a very high drain, which quickly kills the batteries, even when the lights are not being used. The way around this is to lock out the lights, either in the UI or mechanically, which isn't a big inconvenience, but a much nicer solution would have been to simply have a lower aux output level available. So overall, these lights are plenty fine. I think they have a unique and compelling design, and I do enjoy using them with their great beams and nice form factor. They also represent good value, with the P01 coming in at $35 and the 02 at $40. I actually purchased both on sale for under $30 each, which is a great price. However, I am really put off by their user interface, high standby drain, lack of options, and mediocre performance. As a result, I just do not recommend these lights, unless they fill a specific niche for you and those issues are a non-concern. 
The PO2 is still pretty unique as a pocketable thrower, and it doesn't have any direct competition really, making it a good option. While the PO1 is a poor choice in the 14500 category, I recommend looking at other lights from Workos, Sofern, Skillhunt, Ace Beam, and Convoy instead. Of particular note is the lack of dual fuel capabilities, which is a big draw for lights in this size class. Well, that's really about it for this one. I was hoping it would be a more positive video, but alas, I just wasn't impressed by either of these lights. If you are looking for an affordable EDC light, there are lots of other great options. Here's a video comparing three lights that I happily recommend.